Welcome to our unit on logic. Today we're going to discuss patterns and inductive reasoning. But first, let's talk about some vocabulary. Okay, so let's define inductive reasoning. Inductive reasoning is what you use when you're in science class. So in inductive reasoning, I observe what is going on around me and I try to reason a pattern. Okay, so I research, I look at what's going on, and I try and reason a pattern. Is there a pattern to what's going on? Okay, once I think I found a pattern, then I make a conjecture. A conjecture is merely after I observe this pattern, I make a statement that I think is true. Okay, so in science you would call this a hypothesis. In math, we call it a conjecture. Okay, and then you keep observing. And a counterexample is when I find something that tells me my conjecture is not true. So if it's mathematical, I find a problem that it doesn't work in. So that's my conjecture. I find it's not true, so there is my counterexample. So these three terms we're going to be using throughout. Inductive reasoning, I'm looking for a pattern. Conjecture, after observing the pattern, I make a statement that I think is true. And my counterexample is I find an example of why my conjecture is not true. It's false. Okay. Now, you don't have to write this down. We're just going to talk about some patterns. There are arithmetic sequences. That's where the sequence of numbers, where you add a specific amount to get the next value. So in other words, to get from 3 to 5, I add 2. To get from 5 to 7, I add 2. To get from 7 to 9, I add 2. So if I wanted the next two numbers in this pattern, I would take 9 plus 2 is 11. 11 plus 2 is 13, and that's how my pattern would continue. So that's arithmetic. I'm adding. So that's the key. I'm adding or subtracting. So it's either an addition or a subtraction. Okay, so let's go on to geometric sequences. That's a sequence of numbers where you're going to multiply by a specific amount to get to the next value. So in this case, 3 to 6, I am multiplying by 2. 6 to 12, I'm multiplying by 2. 12 to 24, I'm multiplying by 2. 24 to 48, I'm multiplying by 2. So that if I want to get to the next set of numbers, I take 48, I multiply by 2, and I get 96 would be my next number. I take 96, I multiply by 2, I get 192. Now this doesn't have to be just multiplication. I could be multiplying or I could be dividing. Okay, so up here, addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction. Down here, multiplication or division. Okay, so those are the kind of mathematical sequences we might be looking at. There's also, okay, so let's look at this pattern. 3 to 9, I am multiplying by 3. 9 to 27, I am multiplying by 3. 27 to 81, I am multiplying by 3. So what are the next two numbers? Well, 81 times 3 gives me 243. I multiply by 3, I get 729. Okay, so that was a geometric pattern because I was multiplying. Geometric. Okay, what other kinds of patterns? Well, we could have picture patterns. This is geometry. We deal a lot with things that are visual. So this is a star and then an arrow, a star and then an arrow, a star 
So we'd assume that the next one should be an arrow, and then after that would come another star. This might be the border around the, around the ceiling of your room. You might have a border of stars and diamonds or stars and circles. So um, picture patterns just goes from one to the other. What, how does it change from one to the other? Okay, so let's look at this one. What would the next two figures be? Well, I look, I've got circles. So I know the next two, two figures are going to have be circles, and then there's going to be something in that circle. So I have a triangle, which has three sides. I have a rectangle, which has four sides. Then I have a pentagon, which has five sides. So it looks like my next figure is going to have six sides. So that would be, okay, so let's send that to the back. So this can come out in front, so that's going to look like that. Let's send that one to the back, so when we bring out, so this now has six sides. And I'm assuming my next one's going to have seven sides, so let's bring out my seven. And I put that in there, so that one has seven sides. So those would be the next figures in my pattern, if it were a pictorial pattern like that. So there's mathematical, there's pictorial. Let's go on to business. If you had a business, and you had a skateboard shop, and you found that you just bought it in January, okay, and you noticed over the five consecutive months after you bought it, the sales of small wheeled skateboards decreased. So January, you sold somewhere between 55 and 60, maybe 57. February, you sold 55, maybe 51 in March. April was under 50. May, you're down to 45. So if we use inductive reasoning, inductive reasoning tells us that we're for June, we would expect to sell less than 45 skateboards. But is that a true conjecture? Well, there's a couple things in business um, that might affect what's going to happen here in June. OK, so what could happen? Well, let's see. What happens at, at, in June? School's out. And what happens when school's out? Kids get more active inside. So instead of going down, it could go up. So when June rolls around and we sell 50 skateboards, there is my counter example of my conjecture. June rolled around and I sold 50 instead of less than 45. So that's not necessarily true. In business, we have to see more than just a couple of months trend. We're looking for a yearly trend, and that yearly trend might be June, July, we peak. August, we peak some more. And in September, maybe we start slowly going down, because what's happening? Well, September, you guys are back in school. So this might be more of a trend. So you have to be careful on the pattern. You have to have more information. OK, so counterexample. We found a counterexample, which means in June, the sales skyrocketed. OK, so let's see. Counterexample for each conjecture. If the name of a month starts with the letter J, it's a summer month. Well, June is a summer month. July is a summer month. But August is also a summer month. August does not start with a J. So therefore, August is my counterexample of a month that does not start with a J. OK, let's look at number two. You can connect any four points to form a quadrilateral. Well, this might be easier to draw, this conjecture. OK, so I've got four points. 
So I am going to connect those four points and when I do I have a quadrilateral. It's just something with four sides. Now my question is, is there a way to connect those four points so that I do not have a quadrilateral? The answer to that is yes. If I connect this point to this point and then I go down here and then I go up here and then I go over here this is no longer a quadrilateral because I have one side, two sides, three sides, four sides, five sides, six sides. Okay, so I have two triangles back to back. So there would be my counterexample of not having a quadrilateral. Instead, I have something quite different. So you have to be careful on that one. Quadrilateral, the lines can't intersect each other. Okay, so let's try some more mathematical things. Complete the conjecture. The sum of any two odd numbers is, well, what is the sum? of any two odd numbers. So we're talking odd and even. So the answer here is either going to be even or it's going to be odd. So I'm going to say the sum of any two odd numbers. Well, what, what if we say it's an odd number? Okay, so make sure you know the meaning of the conjecture. A sum is add two numbers. Odd numbers are anything that cannot be divided by 2. So divided by 2 cannot. Okay, I sound like Yoda. Okay, divide by 2 cannot. There's a good Yoda saying. Okay, so let's see this another way. So an odd number, okay, 1 plus 1 is 2. 3 plus 13, 16, 5 plus 1, 6, 21 plus 9, 30, 7 plus 3, 10, 101 plus 235, let's see, 336. Well, so each sum is even, so the sum of any two odd numbers is actually even. So I was wrong up here. Now, can you show me mathematically why? Well, an even number can be divided by two. So we could say an even number can be represented by two times anything. Two times zero is zero. Zero is an even number. Two times one is two. That's an even number. Two times two is four. That's an even number. So how do I get to the odd numbers? Well, if I take two times zero, plus 1, I get 1. If I take 2 times 1, I get 2, plus 1 is 3. So it looks like if I take any even number and add 1, I get an odd number. Okay, so now, if I add 2 odd numbers, 2x plus 1, plus 2x plus 1, I get 4x plus 2, And that means that would be 2 times 2x plus 1. So that's 2 times something. So that's an even number. So that's why it's an even number. And we're going to stop here for a minute because I need to go. I'm running out of time. So we're going to have to do this in two videos. So this was part one. And in just a moment, you're going to click and go to the link and go to part two.